So finally I get to dig this damn video. And uh, we have a guest. Tomo. You gonna let me do this video? Yeah. You gonna let me do it? Yeah. Say hi to everybody. Yeah. Say hi. Say hi Tomo. Alright, so I thought for Samurai Sunday and a few other videos coming up, um, I'd take a look back at some of the swords that I have and how they've held up for a while. And the first one will be this guy right here. So I got this back in, I actually had to go back and see what I got, the dates I got these in May of 2021 from Hanbon. This is my Unibukai from them. And I'm gonna include some footage, um, close-ups of this. But this has copper fittings. The Suba, Fuchi, and Kashra are all copper. Um, the blade itself is a through hardened 1095 blade. This thing is like one of my most favorite cutters right here. Um, my brother liked it so much that we bought him one. And this thing has held up after two years of just using it all the time. The Edo, you can move it a little bit, but it's still really tight. Is it a perfect sword? No, it's not. Um, but there's no sharp edges. Everything's super tight on this thing still. So, I like it. It's really, really nice Unibukai that they did. Anything I throw at this sword, it just handles it like crazy. Now, it doesn't have huge nodules on the Samigawa. It's going to be hard to see because it's black on black which I kind of like. But for $166, I mean, it's a beast of a cutter. It really, really is. It's I've never rolled an edge on it. Never chipped an edge on it. So they did a really good job on this one. <clears throat> I mean, I've had a, had a bad sword from them yet. Which is a good thing. It really is. The other sword, like I said, I had to take notes. I have like two pages. I got back in um, February 25th. Now this is from 2022. And that would be this guy right here. My T10 from Bohayu. 
It's got real Samagawa. Now on the description, you, you just got to take them with, you know, faith that what's on the descriptions is what it is. You know. But it says, the fittings are all iron. The Suba, the Fuchi, and the Kashra are all iron. And the leather's real. Which it possibly could be real leather. Now, the diamonds on this. I also have close-up videos of this I will put in. The diamonds are not perfect on this at all. You know, they're kind of they're kind of hokey. They kind of are. But there again, I this one is even tighter yet. I really have a hard time moving these. There's no hishigami papers in these either. And like I said, this is a T10 blade, differentially hardened, Shinogi Zakuri, another beast of a cutter. This thing is nice. I like the way it handles. I like how both of these handle. They handle really, really good. Both polishes are nice. This one really has a mirror finish on it. Is it a perfect sword? No, it's not. You know, there's no major ledges on any of these swords, though. And nothing that's going to cut you or interfere with the handling of it. Whatsoever. Like the polish on this one. Unipakai. Now, this one's kind of dirty. But it's it's not like super super high gloss finish the Bohio I would say has a, a higher polish on it of course I have had this a lot longer and it's it is it's covered in oil in that one but this I mean for oh, what 140 something like that it's really nice really nice sword it's got scratches on it though from cutting you're you're gonna this the norm you're gonna get that especially from water bottles because water bottles they they'll scratch your edges up pretty pretty quick but am i happy still with these two swords absolutely I have no complaints with these whatsoever if you're just going to be doing a lot of backyard cutting some um, Tama Shigiri I'd say it's a perfect you know these two are a perfect sword to to use to do that I, like I said, I've had no complaints with these whatsoever. Everything stays tight on them. They hold an edge really well. Neither one of these have I rolled an edge or chipped the edge. And this one, the first thing I cut with this was bamboo. And it just zipped right through it like it was butter. I mean, crazy. And that's why I was able to go out and cut bamboo with our son. <clears throat> But I've cut mats with this one. 
I've cut mats with this one and they're mainly beach mats because they're cheaper and I'll put a quarter inch uh, bamboo that you get at the nursery and then roll it up in the center and then soak the whole thing for 24 hours and it seems to do really good and they, both these will do a clean cut right through them no problem this guy being two years old I didn't sharpen this for like a whole year and I just recently had to resharpen it so they did a really good job at the tempering on this on this blade to hold an edge really good and like I said I use, this is my go-to guy right here all the time you know and it's flexible it's very nimble in the hands very very nimble this, because all only because you feel nimble in the hands, it shouldn't feel top heavy. The diamond, uh, it doesn't have a huge pronounced diamond on it. Let me see if I can't get that in there. But the diamond isn't that huge on it. Um, my more, most recent one, two recent ones um, that have Unibukai have more of a pronounced diamond on the end than this one but it's $166 you know but the heat treat on this is really good it's on the money for sure out of being able to do trick cuts I would definitely if you want to get into trick cutting is get an Unibukai for sure if you want to do just universal cutting heavy cutting kind of That'll do it. I mean, I would have no fear of cutting bamboo with this thing whatsoever. This thing, I'm pretty sure whatever I threw at it would do just fine, and I pretty much do. But it, it's got a nice edge on it. Couple spots I'm gonna have to resharpen, but it'll it'll cut. No problem. And the Saya, still tight. Still super, super tight on that guy. Now this one, I've actually had to shim um, the Saya on it. Okay. You're not going to be able to see it. You might catch it on the camera there. There's a little shim in there. So I, I did have to shim it. And I do believe I've only had to shim this one time. And then that's it. And then... It's not coming out. So... And that's on par. Because um, Hanbon normally uses a hard wood. This one's not really that hard of a wood, but it's keeping its tension, which is good. But even with the hardwood Saya, they're eventually they're going to wear out because you got metal on wood. It's it's bound to happen, and you're going to have to shim it. Um, we're kind of talking about that last night on Samurai Night Live. If you haven't caught that, go over to Samurai Birds channel, and you can check it out. But the thing we're talking about is that when you get into swords, you really have to be mindful of the things that you have to maintain on them. Not just, you know, the blade. And, you know, taking the handle off, tightening up the suba. You've also got to remember you got to maintain your, your saya. Because we're talking about the first reaction people have when something's dropping, they want to catch it. Well, you don't want to catch something like this. You do want to, if it does fall out, just let it fall. You know, it's a hard thing to do too, because like I said, it's our natural action to reach out and grab something. But it's better to let this fall than to get cut by it. 
you know. And yeah, I, I, I even said, you know, you'll probably cry because your sword fell, but at least you still have your digits, you know. So it's like, really got to be mindful of just everything on it on a katana and even European swords. You have to be mindful of everything that you should check and maintain. <clears throat> Fortunately, um, I have not had a sword when I bend over fall out onto the ground. Um, if you do suspect it's loose, just put your hand when you bend over. Just put your hand on the end of it, on the kostra. Or just kind of like put your hand right here. Mainly it's a lot easier. You can put it on the costume when you bend over if you have to pick something up. But that's also a good indication if you got to, you know, shim your saya. When you have your obi belt, just bend over. If it wants to start falling out, it's good. It's a good indication you shim it. You know, but if you're bending over and it doesn't fall out and but when you push it with your thumb, it pops out, and you're good to go. But that's my look back at these two swords from Hanbon and Bohayu. So I would, yeah, recommend either one of these swords, you know, to anybody, because they've held up really, really good. And neither one of these. If you look at the Kashra, okay, you'll see that the Edo goes around it. Goes right around that Kashra. Same with this Bohayu. Now this Bohayu is a little bit more bunched because, well, it's supposed to be leather. Like I said, we got to take their word for that. But with both these swords, this kosh, the Koshros on both these has never come loose. I always say this, every sword that I've gotten with the Edo wrapped around the Koshra has helped it from coming loose. It has always stayed tight. I don't know if it's because of that or what, but every sword that I have that has that Edo wrap around it. It's never come loose. I've never had a glue single one that has been like this. So there's got to be something to it being wrapped around there. It's helping it hold it on from coming loose. Because if this comes loose, this whole thing, if it comes off, it's just going to unravel. So, I don't know. Probably something to it. We also have a new person in the sword community, Glenn. He was on last night with us. It was a pleasure to have Glenn on there. Um, if you don't know Glenn's story of his experience of getting a sword, go over to his channel, subscribe to him, like his video, and it's, oh God, Half-Breed Samurai is the name of his channel. Do, do, and I will double check that to make sure. Half breed samurai. Do, 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 do. He's got one video right now, which is fine. He's starting out, but it is on Dragon Sword, and it was quite informative listening to him of everything that he went through with them. I think it was BS what he went through with them, for sure. I'm not gonna get into it. You know, if you want, go watch the live and his video, and you'll find out what's going on. I have found out more about, you could say that company, so. But anyways, that is it for Samurai Sunday. 
I would do some cutting with these, but it's been raining all day. All day long. And it doesn't look like it's going to let up, and I'm probably not even going to be able to do any cutting this week at all. <coughs> Excuse me. And that shit's driving me crazy. So everyone take it easy. We'll see you on the next go around.